Good morning. It's May 1st, 2013, and I'm going to teach a devotion on sexuality. I just want to encourage you, for whatever reason that you've come to this video, to listen to this. That my ultimate goal in everything that I do in my life as a Christian and as a pastor is to help people learn how to love God and love people more. That is our ultimate end and our ultimate aim in this relationship with God. It's loving Him and loving people. And so um, I just want to ask you a fundamental question as you come to hear this devotion about sexuality. And that would be, will you allow me to teach whatever the Bible says about the Feast of Tabernacles? That's right. This is about sexuality. Um, and I just want to know if you are expecting me to teach accurately what the scriptures say, what the Bible says about the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles without changing it or distorting it. What about the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem? When it comes Christmas time, we read Luke 2 and it comes from Micah 7, a prophecy in the Old Testament. Can I teach about the Christ and his birth and the expectation, and finally when he comes, about what the Bible says about Jesus' birth? Just to be accurate. Uh, all right, so can I also teach what the Bible says about murder and, and stealing? I'm not asking whether we like it or whether we agree with it. I'm just saying as a Bible teacher, do you expect me to teach what the text actually says? Because as a Christian... Um, with my norms being set either by my family or being a non-Christian and my norms being set by my family or my culture, I become a Christian and then all of a sudden i got to determine if this is God's word, will I hear it for what it says and then have to deal with it in my life. But will I come to the text saying, uh, I believe this is God's word and that I should understand what it says. So likewise then, when it comes to sexuality, are you willing, am I willing to hear what the Bible says concerning this issue? Concerning purity, concerning discipline, concerning, concerning the parameters, how I can express my sexuality, and how I should not express my sexuality. I have to be willing to ask the question first, do I really want to hear what the Bible says about this issue? Now, how I deal with that after I hear it, okay, that's another, another question, um, but... I don't know. I mean, as a Christian, as a Bible student, and as a Bible teacher, I just realize that, that I don't know the answers to many things. I believe that God has spoken into this world, and the main way that he gives me words or instructions or teaches me by his Holy Spirit is by his word, by the scriptures, by the Bible. And so I come to the text trying to figure out what does God think. Because in the end, who cares what a Bible teacher thinks, a person thinks, anybody in our culture thinks, or what Mark Patterson thinks. We're trying to understand what does God think, the one who gave us this amazing gift of sex. And then did he put parameters on that, just like in any other area of our life? And if he has, what are they? And so I, I hopefully you don't expect me to change what, it, what the Bible actually says. I'm sure you don't. We want to know what does the Bible say about this issue. And then we have to deal with, in our practical life, um, how am I going to respond to that? So I don't think we should fault Christians or people who really believe um, uh, in, in certain things in the way that they live their life because they're basing it on the scriptures and what they think God has said. And so when you come to this study, hopefully you understand that I, I'm just looking for truth. I don't know it. And I feel like and believe that it comes from God's word. And so I want to know what the Bible says about sexuality. And as I find out the answers to this, in the end, it's just going to help me to love God and love people. As I'm obedient to um, the way he says I can and can't express it, with discipline in my life concerning this area, and then how that blesses and, and um, my relationship with my, especially my spouse, and all the people around me, as I live within the confines of what God created for this amazing gift. Thanks for listening.